Well, it is just my pleasure and privilege to introduce a, a good friend, uh, Pastor Bill Elif. And let me just uh, give a little intro about Bill. He's the founder and National Engaged Pastor of the Summit Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. And I know him personally, uh, that he truly has a genuine passion for revival and what he calls methodological renewal in the church. Maybe we'll talk about that sometime. But he says both new wine and new wine skins. Uh, he speaks at many conferences. He's written a lot. He's consulted a lot. He's actually been to West Michigan uh, for leading a prayer a gathering of pastors did such a great job. He's been in ministry for more than 50 years. Uh, he works with One Cry, which is a nationwide call for spiritual awakening, and that's how I first got to know my dear friend Bill. He's written uh, 15 books, booklets, and he just is great uh, about communicating about God and equipping. And But what's really a few exciting things. One is that uh, you're married to Holly and you have only eight children. So it, you just, you know, you got to really mere, work on that. <laughs> I know, a mere, a mere eight and, a and mere. only uh, 22 grandchildren. Only so 22 we, and counting, of, yes. Yeah. But what's cool, yeah. you, you mentioned in your bio here that five of your sons and sons-in-law are pastoring or in church uh, planting ministry. That's yeah. that's exciting, Bill. That's okay. awesome. Yeah, it really is. Uh, it's what, a great joy. Uh, and I noticed in your bio, you mentioned drama. Does that mean you've been in drama or have you written uh, dram dramatic uh, things? Oh, I was I, I was a drama major in college. Oh, no and, kidding. Uh, I did not know that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and I've... So through the years, I've written a number of dramas and done things. I did a, uh, several years ago, did a hour and a half uh, C.S. Lewis. Uh, no from kidding. All from its own words. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But um, I just enjoy, I enjoy that. But I, it's not the biggest thing in my life. No, no, but that's cool. I love that. I love that. I've used it as a tool. Sure. Well, as you know, the, the topic of this podcast that God has put on my heart is, you know, what is God saying to the American church today? Mm -hmm. And maybe a subtitle is, you know, we've been praying for revival, as you know, with One Cry and with our Grand Awakening, and many groups wow. have been praying for revival for many years. What, is it coming? Is it here? Is it going to come? Is there, what stands between us and, and seeing God to move in our nation in a powerful way? Yeah. yeah. So what, well, what are some of your thoughts on that, Bill? I think, uh, you know, I think several things. I think, number one, uh, we're in a we're in an increasingly dark time in our nation. I, I, I don't think anybody uh, that has any spiritual sensitivity at all would disagree with that. I was rereading uh, Romans one today. Mm -hmm. And the reality is when people ignore God and walk away from him, there are huge consequences. And if we continue to do that against all of his gracious, merciful mm -hmm. voices to us, we reap the results of separation from God. And uh, the, 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 the final one of those, when God gives, gives us up, the Bible says, is a depraved mind and uh, that word means a reprobate mind it means that you've lost the ability to make moral judgments mm -hmm. in other words you you look at you look at wrong and it really is right to you 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 don't have the discernment you don't have the ability to say no that's wrong that's gone because god is gone in your consciousness and so Randy, I, you know, I used to hear people say things and I would think, how in the world can they, they're intelligent, how could they believe that? Mm -hmm. And uh, I would hear that every one, just occasionally. Now we hear it just constantly. I mean, our, our airways are just filled with that. But that's the world, you know, that that's lost right. people who right. don't know Christ, mm -hmm. who don't have Christ are going to function like lost people. Mm -hmm. And so the world is getting darker. The tragedy is that so much of that has crept into the church. Yes. And uh, 
you, you know that 85% of the churches across America are plateaued or dying, and we could go into a host of reasons mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. We're starting across the nation about four to 5,000 churches. There's a wonderful emphasis on church planning uh, that's happening. I'm right in the middle of that personally, and our church is. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need to be starting. Uh, I don't want to bore you with all of the numbers, but we're going backwards about a thousand churches a month okay we're losing so five, a thousand we're losing that. ground uh -huh. yeah a thousand a month even counting those that we're starting hmm. so uh it's just a tremendous need and i think in the cycle of revival that we see all the way through the scripture that um god is is getting us ready i i think the god has to bring the church to desperation hmm and to repentance, uh, or we'll never turn back to him. And that's where he always begins, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, with, with, and so all these things swirling around us, we can get mad about them. We can get angry at people, mm -hmm. uh, which is not a great a biblical solution. Um, or, or we can realize that the world is getting increasingly dark and, and it calls for a response from the church. Yeah. of repentance and brokenness mm -hmm. and prayer and witness. And the question is, are we willing to pay that price? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we have abortion in this country. We have same-sex marriage. We are the, the, the largest producer and consumer of pornography in the world. Uh, I mm -hmm. saw a statistic the other day that in America, there are more couples living together without marriage than are married uh, births mm -hmm. out of wedlock are we're you know, like four percent. Uh, not too many years ago, now it's forty percent growing. Some parts of our community, it's it's eighty, ninety percent of children born out of wedlock, and so on. And you know, it's again, it's tempting to to point the bony finger out there and say, you know, it's all their fault. But as you point out, a lot of that is is in the church as well. A lot of that, uh, yeah. those sorts of thoughts and immorality. Right. And 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 we're. Uh, you know, everything that you've just described is what you see in the latter portion of Romans chapter one, Sure, which, which makes you realize we're not in the first stages mm -hmm. of this. We're in the last stages yeah, yeah. of this. And, the, and their consequences and, and mm -hmm. the judgment of God against sin is falls on believers and unbelievers yeah. uh, in the nation. God, God so, does judge. Go ahead, Bill. You go ahead. Finish your thought. Yeah, so I, I just think the, the question is, though, uh, what is God doing in the church? Yes. And, and when I look there, to be honest about it, I am, I am pretty encouraged in some way. Now, that okay. doesn't, you look around or you may look at your church or a mm -hmm. city or whatever and say, well, I'm, I'm not all that encouraged. But let me tell you why. I believe I've studied revival all my life. Right. And and uh, been a part of some very supernatural movements of the Lord, just mercy drops. Um, God is always previous. Hmm. And so when you study uh, the, the great awakenings in America, you see prior to those awakenings, the decline in society, hmm. the growing desperation in the church, and then something begins to happen. God begins to wake up his church. And again, it, it comes out of desperation. But for instance, prior to the Welsh revival in 1904, 1905, the 10 years prior to that, things began to happen. A prayer movement started across that principality that hadn't been there since the previous revival in, in the 1850s. Uh, pastors began to realize that the teaching about the role of the Spirit of God in revival um, was not being taught. And so they began to have conferences uh, about, about just how to walk with Christ, how to be controlled by the Spirit of God, how to seek God for revival. Those conferences began to happen. Another thing that happened was God began to raise up young leaders. Hmm. Uh, we we uh, think of Evan Roberts, but there right. were many. Not, he was not the only one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Seth Joshua, his 
friend was going around the country and speaking about these very things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, again, this went on for, you can trace it, or at least in my studies, I've traced it back 10 to 12 years, this right kind of a, uh, not a tsunami, but a slowly rising mm -hmm. tide mm -hmm. of hunger and passion and prayer. Okay. And let me just, let me just comment on things that are happening in our nation related yeah, to that. I'd love to hear it. First of all, there, I, I don't think there's any question, but there is a significant movement of prayer that's been happening in the last five to eight years in our nation. Mm -hmm. Dave Butts, who you know well, yes, Randy, he's yeah. the head of the National Prayer Committee. Yes. And Dave uh, said to me not too long ago that that they believe that they can uh, say with all confidence that more people are praying right now than at any time in American history, just sheer numbers of people praying. And we that comes in waves, uh, you know, before the last election, uh, before uh, Trump was elected, there was a huge movement of prayer mm -hmm. that happened in our nation. Mm -hmm. Yes, at less yes. in the last few years, but still movements of prayer, prayer meetings, prayer groups, um, uh, cities that our churches are joining together in prayer. Listen, we if you've been in that for a little while, you start to take it for granted. Yeah. This was not yeah. happening 15 years ago. That's true. This was not going on. That's so true. so what is that? There is a growing tide of desperation and a growing movement of prayer. Another thing that's encouraging to me is a wave of young leaders hmm. uh, who are having a, a, a growing passion for revival and spiritual awakening in our nation. Um, so I don't know if your listeners have followed what is happening in uh, Henderson, Tennessee, uh, at the Long Hollow Church. But uh, the pastor there, Robbie Gallaty, this is a church of 7,000 mm -hmm. people. And during COVID, uh, Robbie just uh, said on his, the Lord told him, just go out on your front porch at night, and I just want you to sit in solitude and listen to me. Wow. And he began to do that, and about every night, and about uh, three or four months into that, God said to him, Robbie, the country's not the problem. The church, your church is not the problem. You're the problem. Wow. And you're full of pride, and mm. on and on. He began to just, um, you know, just do surgery on mm. his soul. Mm. God sent an incredible uh, personal revival to Robbie's life. Oh, wow. And, and... In December, one day, the Lord just kind of said to him, spontaneous baptism. And he thought, what in the world is that? And he just felt impressed. The Lord wanted him to just open up for any who needed to be baptized, to be spontaneously baptized in the service. Now, that was in December of um, 2020. The last report I heard over 1,500 people had been baptized in his church. Hmm. And you can't, I've been there, I've talked to Robbie uh, a lot. Uh, you can't explain that any other way than God. It's not manipulative, it's not uh, hysterical, it's just God moving, hmm. saving people, people being saved. Robbie, uh, in his denomination, the Southern Baptists, uh, is highly known and, and that has sparked a movement among young pastors his age in their, in their 30s and the early 40s that is, a, is pretty phenomenal. And I know even here in Little Rock, I've, I run with a group of young guys that they are so hungry for revival and awakening, that's all they talk about. That's all when they when you say for. young guys, how old are, are they roughly? In their what 30s, age? Yeah, 30s. 20s, 20s, 30s, 40s. Awesome. I mean, these are... Uh, I, I don't know of a pastor, and I, and I deal with a lot of pastors across our state and mm -hmm. across the nation. Right. I don't know of, of hardly any pastor that's not talking about revival mm -hmm. and spiritual awakening. Yeah. Well, now again, Randy, you and I have been at this a long time. No, we have been, Bill. Yeah. Yeah, and and you, that just wasn't that way, 
uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, even five years ago, to the extent that it is now. So, so you're, en you're encouraged by that. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm let me, very let me, encouraged. Let, let me just ask this, though. I mean, things are bleak in our country. Politically, the division, the news, it's ugly, needless to say, right? Mm -hmm. Right it is is again. I'm going to be. I hate to use the word devil's advocate because he, he doesn't need any help here. But just just to push back a little bit, is it possible mm -hmm. that some of the prayer and so on is just you know we want things to get back nice again so things are comfortable, rather than oh, we want to see yeah. God move and we're all in with Him. Can you yeah. push back to me oh, on, on that issue? I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know. I, I look at my own prayer life and yeah. my motivations are not always pure. And so for sure that's true, but I think even that is waning. And the reason is mm. uh, it's getting so dark. I mean, mm -hmm. what we're seeing politically, culturally, yeah. uh, socially, real Christians who really know the Lord are, are coming to the conclusion business as usual will not turn this yeah it's, yeah. it's impossible i, I agree with the that. only thing that would would be a mighty movement of god yeah, yeah. um and and let me tell you i think there's another turn that we haven't experienced yet okay that is necessary so randy you and i know a man named sammy Tippett, yes. and uh sammy is a has been all over the world as a evangelists and revivalists mm -hmm. and i don't have many men that i have more respect for than sammy and uh he was involved in the romanian revival in the 80s okay that was just a which ultimately led to the overthrow of communism and uh, that that was a spiritual movement a lot of people don't realize that sure yes yeah so that that revival began in uh, Aradia, Romania, when a pastor stood up and he began to preach to his people, let the repenters, which is what Christians were called, let the repenters repent. Mm -hmm. And God began to work on, on them. And you can hear a pirated tape that was made of that sermon. And you began to hear people sniffing and then crying mm -hmm. and then the audience gets so loud that you can't hear what the pastors say wow. as they're weeping before the lord yeah i was talking to sammy about this just just this week okay and sammy said bill they repented of two main things uh and one was and the the main one was this that they didn't love lost people. Oh, sure. And that they weren't sharing the gospel with people. Yeah. Now, we don't talk about that much. And we talk about repenting of abortion, repenting of pride, repenting of, and all those things are true, all yeah. those individual yeah. sins, all of those corporate sins. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when you study the life of Jesus, he didn't spend his time railing against the government. Uh, he, if he got mad at anybody, he got mad at false prophets and Pharisees. That's true. But what he did was he came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yeah. And he didn't miss a moment, 24-7, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. sharing the gospel and living the gospel in front of those people. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing, Randy, that... I think we, I think when we began to see that in the church, and that, and and he said in Romania, for people to be baptized and for people to share the gospel meant they were going to prison. Sure, and there was a cost, and and we're not far from that. I think we're way closer than we realize, and when people are willing to stand at whatever cost and share Christ with everybody they see, not in a condemning way, yeah. not railing against all the evils because yeah. they're there and that's that's right. That was present in Rome and it was present in Romania and mm -hmm. you know, but just sharing the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, 
uh, when we repent of that sin, we may be close to seeing the revival and the awakening that we long for. Yeah. I mean, it's so clear, you know, in the Great Commission, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Mm -hmm. So just go in your big churches and have a good time once a week and everything's fine here and just be nice. No, go. Don't play defense. Go. Play offense. Make disciples. So it's sharing the gospel and then making disciples that will make disciples that will make disciples. And, uh, and that's work. But we, yeah. you know, our culture just basically says, oh, you know, don't offend people. It's mm -hmm. almost like we have this belief that Satan has dropped into our minds and hearts that nice people ultimately will go to heaven. You just, you know what I'm saying. Rather than, no, we're all sinners. We all deserve hell. We all need the gospel. We need to, right. Jesus to forgive us, and we need to come to him one by right. one. So, yeah, that's a good point. I think prayerlessness would be another issue that affects the church in America. Absolutely. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I t totally agree with that. And, you know, if I don't pray, it, it, yep. I, d I don't have a relationship yeah. <laughs> because you don't yeah. you, you don't have a relationship with somebody you don't talk yeah. to. You know, you know you, you I, I, go ahead. I yeah. would make another point yeah. about th this. Um, all of us have that love the lord have thought deeply about COVID, and, yeah. and we say you know what what is this that all of a sudden in six weeks the entire world mm -hmm. is shut down that's true and how could that if you took that incident and you put it you dropped it in the old testament and surround it with old testament commentary how would you describe that well it's god mm -hmm. i mean i i um i just think that that the mm -hmm. the uh work of God calling us uh, and, and, and the judgment of God against sin and all of that. I mean, we, we can say, well, God's terrible to do that. Well, we could also say it's terrible to kill 60 million babies, yes, you know. Absolutely. Uh, but, but here's the point I want to make. I watch pastors and churches, and last year in 2020, I watched them say in the spring, they said, well, we'll be over this in two months, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, yeah. And then they got into June, and they said, well, we'll be over it by September. Pastors who are really pursuing God, I noticed this. About July, August, they said, okay, this, this is with us. So how do they share Christ in India? Mm -hmm. how, how do they do the church in Iran? Yeah. Yeah. How, how does the how does the gospel go forth in China? Exactly. When we don't have buildings, yep. we don't have huge budgets. We don't have this and that and the other. There you go. And so, I know here in our church at the summit, our guys knuckled down and said, "Man, let's let's go back to the simplicity of the Book of Acts. We can disciple people. We can share Christ with people. We can pray." We can it. meet. It I may be in it. smaller groups, yes, you yes, know, yes. but we can meet and, and the gospel can go forward. And I think the COVID in the end of the day may have been one of the greatest things. And I don't, I'm not saying anything about the deaths of people. I understand that. Yeah. And I had it and it was horrible. Uh, but I'm just saying mm -hmm. in the big picture, yeah. Yeah. God stripped us of entertainment, of sports, yep. of all these other things. Yep. He also stripped the church of all the external things that we rely on to prop us up and make us look like we're prosperous yeah. and successful. That's true. And he's taking us back to the basics. And that, I think, in the end of the day, that may be a very healthy thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if you have people in uh, your state like we do in Michigan. Um, and again, these are dear brothers uh, and sisters, uh, but again, you pointed it out a little bit uh, ago that they just say it's the government, the government. we got to fix this government. And uh, again, there's some arguments that I totally endorse. You understand my background is government. I get it. But it makes me think of a quote. Let me read a quote by Chuck Colson back a few years ago. He says, politics has become so big, powerful, and controlled by the special interests that the only way it's going to be reformed is the culture. And when you stop to think about it, politics is simply a reflection of the values of the culture. 
You mm-hmm. change the culture, you'll change the politics. If politics is sick, it means the culture is sick, and we Christians are responsible for the culture. I hope everyone gets involved, active, and prays, he says. And so mm-hmm. to me, that's how I view it, is that we have government, sure, it's got big problems. But culture, it's a lagging indicator of our culture, but that's a lagging indicator of the health of our church and our churches Excellent. in America. And the, yeah. we are the salt and the light. And mm-hmm. we haven't, as you pointed out, we've not been penetrating our culture with the, with the truth in love. We've been just yeah. comfortable, our idols of comfort, and it's all about me and my stuff. And, and you point out in Iran and China and India and other places, the church is growing in America, as you pointed also out, it's, it's been in decline. So yeah. what's it going to well, take? Are, you, 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 from what you said, you're, there's a lot of optimism in things you've said here. At the yeah. same token, you've got to admit that in the dustbin of history, there are many nations who didn't listen to God, and they were destroyed. Do you really yeah. think America's going to go to destruction, or are we going to have another revival? What's your best thought? Well, I mean, I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't venture to say okay. definitively what's going to happen to America. Mm-hmm. I do believe that we are on the edge of revival and awakening. I pray if so. In a year or five years, I don't know, but mm. in, in American history, every 30 to 60 years, we've had a great awakening. Right. First Great Awakening, Second Great Awakening, Prayer Revival, 1857, the, yep. the Welsh Revival, right. and then the Jesus Movement of exactly. 1970. Yep. We're 2020, we're 50 years out from the last Great Awakening. Mm-hmm. And so God's not bound by that cycle. And here's the other thing. God is sovereign, and revival is sovereign. I, I don't think we can say... Uh, okay, Lord, we've prayed this much. You have to do this. Mm-hmm. God is looking at the whole world, and right. he has yep. He has a redemptive plan mm-hmm. that may or may not include the United States. It, it, in the past, mm-hmm. we were the great sending nation for the world. That's right. Um, and we want to be that again. But he's sovereignly moving in all this. Mm-hmm. My responsibility, and ours as churches, is to pursue him with all of our heart and fall in love with Jesus all over again. I love it. And and I guess this is part of the message that I don't hear much. Love lost people. I love it. That's so good. Do you th- here, here's a question, and I, I'll just be very frank. Think of the most liberal person you know that in your mind is really doing damage to our nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, did if Jesus were here, and he is, would he love them? He definitely would, yes. Yeah, and what would he, and what would he do? How would he approach mm. them? What would, mm. what would his attitude, would, would it be just to write scathing articles, yeah. or would it be, uh, you know, to tear up Facebook or mm. whatever with, yeah. with things, uh, or would it be to, to love them, pray for them? I love it. I love it. And and share the gospel when God gives us the opportunity yeah, to yeah. do that. And that's how the kingdom advances. Yeah. I mean, it always has. It always will. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I I pray, and I I again I'm optimistic, and I think, Randy, I think it may get darker. Yeah. Before, uh, before it gets before light. that yes. revival comes. And I I agree with you, Bill. We we could find. Uh, at minimum, uh, you know, the, the tax-exempt status for cr- churches and non-Christian nonprofits could be taken away just for starters. Um, yeah. There could be, you know, the whole concept of, of hate speech. No, you, you right. said I'm a sinner. You said that marriage is between a man and a woman. You just, oh, you go to jail. Yeah. You're hurting my feelings. And, yeah, yeah. And we could go down that well, road. Well, that's, yep. that's the path in every nation. Yep. That uh, the beginning path of, yep. of religious persecution. That's right. That's right. And and we're going right down the same path. Yep. And uh, but again, that takes it. It winnows the church. Yep. We have millions of lost people. Yes. That have been sitting in in pews. That's right. 
and and that that gets when persecution starts that kind of mm. changes the attendance records real quick yeah and uh and yeah. again that's not a bad thing yeah and the church gets serious and and we get desperate and we yeah. cry out and yeah. so you know, you, you know you, you mentioned richard you mentioned uh, romania does the name yeah. of richard vermbrand ring a bell with you yeah. at all yeah he wrote uh, the book tortured, tortured for christ and started right. a ministry for those he came to my campus when i was uh, at uh, mit campus and uh, he took off his shirt it was full of holes that had been put through him by the people who were torturing him. He put his shirt back on, and one thing I'll never forget what he said. He says, and this is back in the 1960s, late 1960s. He said, uh, in Romania, that's how he talked, Romania, we have one kind of Christian, Christ-like Christian, because they had to pay for it, you know, where they were. In America, you have lots of kinds of Christians, he said. Wow. Isn't that wow. true? So when the pressure starts coming on, it's going to winnow us out. And the, the real people are going to stand up and say, okay, I'll be mm -hmm. it. Yeah. You but, know, Joseph Stone, uh, you may know that name. He was yep. also involved. Sure. In Revival, yeah. Aradia. <clears throat> and Stone said um, the turn in that, in Romania, in that church, which is now a manual church in Aradia. Okay. Um, the turn came when when they began to call the repenters to repent, and when they began to teach, they would take the passage, take up your cross. Oh, yes, daily. And, yeah. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I heard Joseph Soames. In fact, he spoke in our church one time. Uh -huh. Say, you know, when when you said cross to Peter. It wasn't a nice little diamond pendant. It wasn't a beautiful steeple. Yeah. Uh, it it meant visions of his yeah. his friends and countrymen writhing in the sun, you know, dying of agonizing death. Yes. So when Jesus he said, when we realized that taking up our cross was physical, it was physical. Yeah. In other words, this is: Are you willing to yeah. cross the line and literally? give Christ the rights to your physical body. Mm -hmm. Well, when you do that, when you step over that line, then when Christ asks you to get up at three o'clock in the morning, yeah, you do it. That's right. When he asks you to share Christ, even though it means you might be persecuted or laughed at, you do it. And he said, when that happened, the people became fearless and they started telling people everywhere about Christ. And all these people started getting saved and Son said the, the police called him in and said, you've got to uh, stop the people from sharing, sharing about Jesus. And he said, well, I'm, I won't do it. They beat him. Mm. Later, they dragged him in again, and they, they gave the ultimate threat. They said, if, if you don't stop and your people don't stop, uh, we will kill you. And Son said, hallelujah. He said, if you kill me, oh, you're doing I'll me a favor. Right I, yeah, I'll go right where I want to go wow. anyway. And you will take my blood and yeah. spread it across the land and it will start a movement. You won't be able to I love it. I love it. And you know what they did with him? They probably let him go. They, they deported him. See? They sent him to America. Sure. Because what can you do to a man who doesn't That's care right. That's right. what you do to him? That's so good. And I think God is wanting to get us there. Yeah, that's good, uh, Bill. And the revival right. will begin, I believe. I, I got a quick question for you. If you, mm -hmm. Bill, and then we're going to put an end to this great interview. This has been awesome, Bill. Mm -hmm. But if you had the ability to speak to every true Christ follower in America, one-on-one, -on -one, what would you want to tell them to, to do, to be, to do, whatever? If you had that ability to, to, to speak to them just heart to heart, what would you want to say? Well, I think what I'd say is along the lines of what I just mentioned. Uh, my life verse is Acts, in Acts 20. Paul said, I don't count my life as dear to myself. Right, but I want to. I want to uh, fully fulfill my mission and preach the gospel. You know, that's what he was saying. Yes, yes. So we live for everything else. Yeah. We we live for prosperity, for reputation, for pleasure, for comfort. Mm -hmm. And I would say, step over the line. 
and give your body mm. to Christ. I love it. Give your body, mm. give your reputation to Christ, mm. give your uh, every bit of your time to Christ, and then say, now, Lord, how do you want to use me? Yes. And he'll He'll use us up. I mean, he'll 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 make us great intercessors. He'll make us great witnesses if we are willing to say, "Not my will, but thine be done." Yeah. And I think that's where Christ mm. is pushing the church. Oh, God, do it. Uh, and he, he's yes. using the pressure of our society mm. and culture yeah. to get us there. I love it. Bill, close us in prayer, would you? And pray toward that end, please. I'd be great, great, glad to. Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you so much for Randy and how you've used his life and our lives and so many lives around the country. And Father, uh, we long for you to come in power. Mm. Uh, Lord, uh, the church is not doing the job. Lord, we have our hearts have grown cold. Uh, we don't love you. Uh, we're not experiencing your presence and your power. And Father, I pray that you would open our eyes to what's happening and the pressure of the world around us would drive us to you. Amen. And uh, Lord, we would say whatever it takes, Lord, to know your presence and power in my life, my family, my church, uh, Lord, you would take us there. And Lord, we thank you for the rising tide of intercessors and the rising tide of young leaders who are passionate for revival and awakening in, in the church and, and the fresh interest there is in those kinds of things. We pray that it would grow and multiply. And oh God, we pray for mercy drops. We thank you for what you're doing. I could just name places where you've been working in the last six months. And I, Lord, we, we praise you for that. Amen. But Father, we ask for more. Yes. We pray for a downpour. We ask for a thunderstorm <laughs> of your grace and uh, a tsunami, Lord, of your saving power. Uh, Lord, and just reading the accounts of past revivals where people would wake up in the middle of the night and cry out to you to be saved. And and, and where the churches were full every day and night, 24-7, and there was no orchestration except you and your spirit. Lord, you are the ultimate leader, and we pray you would lead us, Lord, and that we wouldn't quench your spirit or grieve your spirit. Lord, that we would fast and we would pray and we would cry out to you. And we thank you, Lord, that you have promised uh, repeatedly that you would hear our cry. And Lord, we want to tell you that we believe that. Mm -hmm. We just believe that. We, we believe that when you said, if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn, you would hear and you would forgive and you would heal our land. So Lord, we're counting on that. And so that you would be seen as a promise keeping God, Lord, we're asking you to do to hear and answer our cries mm -hmm. and uh, thank you for this time together today, just to think about these things and and to stir it up a little more, Father, for your kingdom's glory. And we pray it in your precious name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, my friend. Love you. Thank you. Love you, too. And uh, thank you for letting me be on the broadcast.